What's going on guys? This is Vanilik Puma. I figured I'd wait for the smoke to clear a bit before I talked about this topic, but today I wanted to finally talk about some of the returning legendaries from previous Borderlands games that look like they'll be appearing in Borderlands 3. Now a few things before we start. I'm not sure if I can show any Borderlands 3 live streamed gameplay from Twitch, and for that reason, this video is mostly going to contain item cards. Perhaps those that attended the Borderlands 3 gameplay reveal may not mind me showing their gameplay, but I'm not going to take that risk here. Also, this video is including any gun from a previous Borderlands game that is confirmed as returning as a legendary in Borderlands 3. So for example, if a pearlescent from Borderlands 2 is returning as a legendary in Borderlands 3, then it will be included in this video. One final thing before we start, but let me know what some of your favorite weapons are from previous Borderlands games that you'd like to see return as legendaries in Borderlands 3. Personally, I'd like to see the Unkempt Herald and maybe either the Sandhawk or Pimpernel return as legendaries, but again, let me know what you would like to see in the comments section below. That and of course, don't forget to smash like. Otherwise, we better get started here as we have 14 of these to go over and I guess we'll start with one that I was personally pretty excited to see come back and that's the conference call. As you can see, we're getting the same manufacturer and weapon type here and while I can't show specific gameplay of the gun here, its special effect is the same as it was in Borderlands 2, where the projectiles divert outwards after a certain distance at perpendicular angles. The major difference that you may notice from the item card here is that there's an inbuilt shield now, which is something that's new for a slew of Hyperion weapons. Even still, if this gun functions anything like it did in Borderlands 2, then it should be the perfect shotgun for taking on anything that's really large in size. So I've got to say that I'm looking forward to using this thing in Borderlands 3. Moving on to another favorite of mine, we have the Infinity. Now, for those of you that are already familiar with the Infinity, you know what this thing does. For those of you that aren't, the Infinity is a pistol where every shot that's fired doesn't consume ammo, effectively giving you infinite ammo. I can't really show a lot of the gameplay of the new Infinity here, but the visual difference between the new and old one is interesting and could change before release. Otherwise, the new Infinity doesn't have an alt fire mode like some of the other Borderlands 3 weapons have, but then again, maybe we'll see one get added before Borderlands 3 releases. It also doesn't appear that Masher accessories will be returning in Borderlands 3, as the Maggie from Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel is also returning. Just like the original, the Maggie possesses a 6x projectile multiplier, and based on gameplay I've seen, it's pretty similar to the original in that it fires as fast as you can pull the trigger. It also appears that a number of Jacob's weapons will allow ricochets provided you score criticals, and given the Maggie's quasi-shotgun status, pulling off criticals should be pretty easy, and thus, you should more easily be able to take advantage of this effect. Unfortunately, there's no alt fire, but it's nice to see the return of another classic. And for our final functionally similar returning legendary, we have the botch, or bitch as it's actually called, but it's probably not a good idea for me to say botch a whole bunch here on YouTube and just keep it to one bitch per video. All poor jokes aside, the family-friendly SMG is pretty much like you might expect it to be. It becomes super accurate as you fire, it has its characteristically high critical hit bonus, and it also has reverse recoil just like the Borderlands 2 version. It even has the same red text, which is a nice touch as well. Now, there is no alt fire, which is kind of a shame since it would be cool if this thing turned into like a high powered laser or something, but alas, it's nice to know that, yep, it's back. Now that we've gone over our functionally similar returning legendaries, let's discuss some of the noticeably different ones, starting with the Jacob's Gatling Gun. Now I suppose that technically, the claim could be made that this is an entirely new rifle, however, given that it's a Jacob's and given that other non-unique weapons have returned as unique weapons before, I'm going to go ahead and say that in spirit, that the Borderlands 2 and pre-sequel Gatling Gun and the Borderlands 3 Gatling Gun are meant to be the same. 
As for what's different, the Gatling gun has red text now, which reads, watch me crank it, watch me roll, and functions more like a Vladov rifle, except for the fact that there's a physical cranking animation as opposed to a single pull of the trigger. This is a lot different when compared to the old 3x projectile Gatling gun, but if Gearbox manages to come across this video somehow, and you're looking to add an alt fire mode to the new Borderlands 3 Gatling gun, having the classic 3x projectile semi-auto firing mode would definitely be a really cool feature. But if not, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on and playing with the new version of this classic. As for another noticeably different classic, there's the Baby Maker Plus Plus. It's still a TDR, however it appears to be a pistol as opposed to an SMG like it was in Borderlands 2, and rather than spawn two child grenades at a low arc that explode dealing damage, the new Baby Maker seems to spawn four that travel upward in a steep arc, sort of like you might see with the Pipernal from Borderlands 2. Technically, I guess you could say this is a new weapon, hence why it's likely called the Baby Maker Plus Plus, but other than the name, the additional child grenades, and the new weapon type, pretty much everything else here is similar down to the red text. So, it might be a Baby Maker Plus Plus, but it's still a Baby Maker. Now, a gun that I was actually pretty surprised to see was the inclusion of the Bearcat. For those of you that are familiar with Borderlands 2, this gun wasn't very good as it was a doll weapon that had like 6 ammo consumption per shot and did very little damage for that ammo consumption. For Borderlands 3, it's returning as a Torg weapon with an ammo consumption of 4 and based on what gameplay I've seen, it appears to still have its signature burst. Again, I'm surprised to see this gun return and based on what little info we have, the Torg Bearcat is already an improvement over the original Doll Bearcat. Now, this next gun that I'm going to talk about, I have some mixed opinions on, and that is the new Ogre. I think we can all probably agree that the Borderlands 1 style Ogre would have been preferable, but I've got to say that I like the new Ogre as well. As you can see from the item card I've displayed, it's a Vladov weapon now, as opposed to a Torg or Atlas weapon from the previous games. That, and rather than fire conventional gyro jets, the new Ogre appears to fire rockets based on some of the gameplay I've seen. Now, I couldn't tell if these projectiles were able to crit or not from any of the gameplay shown, but it stands to reason that if it can, then the Ogre is still going to be a pretty awesome gun. It would be cool if this one got some kind of alt fire of some sort, but that said, I'm not sure what they would do. Again, this is another one I'd like to get my hands on and play around with. Speaking of guns that fire rockets, another weapon I was surprised to see return was the Devastator. Unlike the Borderlands 2 or Borderlands 1 Ogre though, the Borderlands 2 Devastator wasn't very good. This mainly came down to how the bullets on the Devastator fired from behind the gun for some reason, which greatly decreased your accuracy over a distance. Fortunately, this appears to have been fixed in the Borderlands 3 gameplay I've seen, and now the Devastator seems like it would be a fairly decent pistol that fires double rockets in that signature two-shot burst. While I don't think we'll be able to attest to its true quality until Borderlands 3 actually comes out, I do think it's fair to say that the Devastator is probably much better now. I've got to admit I still want my Unkempt Herald in Borderlands 3, but for now, the new Devastator seems like it could be good to hold me and maybe some of you out there over. This brings us to the Shred of Fire, which, like the Devastator, I was sort of surprised to see. Like the Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel versions, the Shred of Fire has pretty high fire rate and also has a fairly high magazine size. However, and as you can see from the item card, it appears to fire two projectiles per shot. Now, this could be the result of the engulfing prefix, which might be a double accessory for assault rifles, but assuming it's a multi-projectile weapon now, that could actually be a bit of an improvement, even if I wish it consumed just one ammo instead of two. The Shred of Fire I saw also had an alternate fire mode, which was a bipod function that likely reduces recoil, allowing your shots to be more accurate under sustained fire. This is a nice improvement compared to the Borderlands 2 and pre-sequel versions that don't really have this feature. Ultimately, I think we'll see how good the Shred of Fire really is once we can get our hands on the game, 
But for now, I'd say the Shredder Fire will probably be a low to mid tier legendary like the other two versions have been for Borderlands 2 in the pre sequel. Now, another gun that I'm glad Gearbox has decided to stick with, though, is the Unforgiven, which has been sort of hit or miss between releases. Though Masher variants will likely not be existing in Borderlands 3, the new Unforgiven, from what I've seen, looks visually similar to the one from Borderlands 1 in terms of color, and performance-wise, it's still got pretty high crit potential at the cost of low fire rate for a Jacob's pistol. Fortunately, the fire rate is nowhere near as low as the Borderlands 2 pearlescent version, which actually makes that version way harder to use, and a lot of people often think that it's pretty bad, and I would be sometimes inclined to agree with them. Overall though, there's not much else to say about this one, and I'd say for Borderlands 3, it's looking like you're going to be getting a pretty good balance between raw critical hit power and fire rate on the new Unforgiven. Now for our final three entries, I'll be talking about guns that I haven't seen much info on, or more specifically, that I haven't seen gameplay showing people firing or using them. And let's go ahead and start with the Butcher. What we can definitely say is that like the conference call, the Butcher will definitely have a shield attachment in Borderlands 3, and that it has a times 3 projectile multiplier like the original does. And given the red text is the same as the Borderlands 2 version in that it reads, quote, fresh meat, as opposed to, quote, ah, uh, fresh meat, that could indicate that the Borderlands 3 Butcher is functionally more similar to the Borderlands 2 version rather than the Borderlands 1 version that burst fires. Hopefully this ends up being the case since the Borderlands 2 version was such a good gun for basically any character, but I guess we'll see once more trailers and gameplay come out for this game. The Sawbar is yet another gun that I haven't seen any gameplay of, but it appears that it has an unlimited magazine size, but heats up and eventually breaks like a few of Borderlands 3's other weapons. Versions I've seen are in Fire Element, and given that many other returning legendaries have similar effects to what they had in previous games, it's highly likely that the Sawbar has similar effects to what it had in Borderlands 2. This said, the potential heat up slash break magazine mechanic could be an improvement depending on what Borderlands 3's mechanics are, as PC players might be able to use the drop key to drop and pick these types of weapons back up, instantly resetting the cooldown. Otherwise, all we know is that this weapon is from the new Children of the Vault manufacturer as opposed to Bandit. I suspect it will be a lot like the original Sawbar, but I suppose we'll have to wait and learn more later. But that brings us to our final weapon, which is going to be Sledge's Shotgun. Presumably, based on both the item card and this weapon's performance in previous games, it's possible that this could end up being a hybrid between the Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 1 versions. My hope is that this is the case, as the Borderlands 1 version was a Jacobs and provided the player with some temporary stun slash knockback potential which was great for opening enemies up to other attacks and or just knocking them around for some crowd control. Given that Borderlands 3 seems to be more physics based where you can melee barrels, sending them hurling towards enemies and then shoot them and have them explode, knockback features in this way seem possible and I hope this actually gets implemented. If not, it's not the end of the world and we can go back to that traditional burst fire that we saw with Borderlands 2 but I do hope that Sledge's shotgun does return to its roots. At the end of the day, guys, I suspect a lot of the guns we've gone over here will likely be quite different in the final or official release. It's even possible some of the guns we've gone over here might get cut, much like we saw with the Unkempt Herald in Borderlands the pre-sequel. We'll have to wait and see, but until then, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, definitely be sure to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.